awesome. Uh, Brianna Reynolds, Fab TV. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> um, so first up for RJ, um, now there's a scene where um, the neighbours assume that you guys are up to no good because, you know, you've, you're in the van and you've got a girl. Um, the ironic thing is in the front of their yard, they've got a Black Lives Matter sign. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering for you as an actor, how important is it to be breaking down stereotypes like how openly you guys are discussing so much in this film. It's very important because entertainment is what kind of orchestrates how the world moves. You feel me? Whether that's through music or film, kind of what people see and ingest on a day-to-day -day basis with it being either audible or visual, you know, that's kind of how we conduct what is to be believable. You feel me? So mm -hmm. I feel like it's definitely important to show the actuality of certain things, you know what I'm saying? Rather than to put bull stuff in the air. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you guys did that so much within the film. It was just, it was really good to see. Um, next up for Donald, um, the moment you're performing CPR, um, that it's just, it's so involving, like, you going through all of it like it feels like you're there watching it as the audience and you're going through it all that as well anyway is that an actual cpr technique and did you know about it before you actually did it in the film uh yes um i actually it, i was out of practice but i was an ra um uh. in undergrad so we had to get cpr certified um but really kind of going at it and, and doing it and yeah, it was it was really nerve wracking um, because you you create like this uh, this genuine care for for all of your castmates. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm actually performing and doing it on Maddie and she's like doing this amazing job and she's kind of like really she's unresponsive totally and like feeling. completely yeah. and it just kind of takes over. And it's like, no, uh, I want you. I can't have this happen to you. I need you to come back. You right. know, I need this. So baby, come back. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. That's not the right tempo. No, that's. <laughs> I think it was the um the Stand Your Life song by the uh the, the Bee Gees. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I mean, like in that moment as an actor, how do you prepare for something like that? Uh, those I called them my headphone days. Mm -hmm. Um, I would just kind of put every other day. I'm playing around with everyone, and then I just kind of let them know, like, okay, they're like two days that I'm just gonna just kind of be here and not in that moment, but just spatially, just I wanna be able to give this character um, exactly what it needs right. um, without any distractions or anything. And if anyone needs me, then I'll be there for you, but I just have to, you know, be as authentic as possible, so. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> and Sebastian, for you, um, this film goes so effortlessly, effortlessly between, um, you know, thriller and comedy. Um, I think it's when you guys get to the forest and you lose Maddie, I mean, sorry, Emma, and she goes through and she's run off. Um, <laughs> for the audience, it's at that moment that we realize, oh my gosh, this movie is actually, you know, going in two different directions. Like it's over. For you, <laughs> <laughs> um, for you as an actor, how do you, how do you keep on track with, you know, those two different genres? Yeah, I, I don't really, I feel like, you know, for Carlos, this movie's never a comedy, right? Like this is always, and for all of us really, like it's, it's you're having fun and then you're trying to have fun in horrible circumstances, you know, like some, some of the big laughs are when we are like really dealing with some of the most complicated moments of the movie. Like, you know, she's lost in the woods. We're like, where is she? Like, she's up in a tree and you're like, what? Like the situation is so horrible. You can't help but laugh, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so to try to sell that is, you know, it just, you don't even have to. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and then AJ, uh, sorry, RJ, um, what sort of um, audiences do you think should watch this film? Because, you know, it deals with so many different stereotypes and it breaks down so many, um, you know, cultural norms in that. It's a really important film for people to watch. Who do you think yeah. should be watching it? Well, I feel like everyone should, because it's not just pointed to a certain ethnic group or mm. social class. You feel me? The, the subject of perception and conversation is the over, you know, that's the over top umbrella is to start the conversation about different perceptions and, you know, ways of view mm -hmm. that could be discussed, you know, um, y'all can. Y yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think that like, you know, the festival crowd has been wonderful right. and like having all those people watch and really enjoy it has been great. But then like, I've been really excited to see what like regular people think of this, the conversations yeah. that it sparks, like what, you know, mm -hmm. when you have a really big audience like that, suddenly 
it like it brings something up it makes like it create, creates a conversation right any anyone who is just willing to have empathy and see something from a different lens that's who we want to see it and mm -hmm. let us know what you think or anybody who <laughs> drank water <laughs> you can watch it if that's you drink you sprite yeah. only you know no non-water right. drink yeah yeah, right. yeah tequila if you need to it's yeah. thirsty <laughs> Well, congratulations on the film. I absolutely loved it. Can't wait for audiences to see it. And um, yeah, congrats. Thank you for chatting. Thank you.